Our norms are a promise that we will fiercely protect these policies, principles, and norms, the importance of these norms. Those norms became woven into the fabric of the Justice Department. Strengthen those norms. Your commitment to this department, to the norms that sustain it. Our norms are some of the most powerful tools. Our norms matter now more than ever. Attorney General Merrick Garland, that was yesterday, praising his Justice Department. He says it has demonstrated fairness in pursuing historic political cases. He also called out accusations that the DOJ has been weaponized against political enemies. The past three and a half years, there has been an escalation of attacks. These attacks have come in the form of conspiracy theories, dangerous falsehoods, efforts to bully and intimidate career public servants, by repeatedly and publicly singling them out and threats of actual violence. Okay, critics have a lot of issues with what he's saying there. Merrick Garland failed to mention his own role as the first AG to prosecute a former president. Clay Travis, in Focus With Me yesterday, pointed out differences in how his department handled Trump versus Joe Biden's classified documents cases. I think he's trying to make the Department of Justice look like the victim here. I think there was no chance, Harris, that there was going to be any charges brought against uh, against Biden, but there were charges brought against, brought against Trump. And I think that's where people look at this and say, yeah. we don't have a fair and impartial justice system, despite what Garland says. The Wall Street Journal editorial board with this headline, Merrick Garland and the norms of justice. Did he think his Trump prosecutions wouldn't get a furious response? They wrote this, quote, Mr. Garland can lecture about norms all he wants, but he is the man who, under political pressure, broke a norm that had lasted for more than 200 years. Mr. Garland's legacy will be that he unleashed the whirlwind by prosecuting a former president. He could at least spare the country his righteous indignation, end quote. In focus, Carrie Urban, Fox News legal editor. I thought about you so many times as Merrick Garland was speaking yesterday, wanting to get your response, your reaction. Now I can. Yeah, there, there's nothing normal about the Department of Justice uh, attempting to imprison the former leader of the free world, who also happens to be the attorney general's uh, the political opponent, his, his boss's political opponent. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, Harris, under this Department of Justice in Washington, D.C., the U.S. attorney here declined to prosecute 67 percent of all people arrested and the cases brought to him. Except for two distinct groups, anyone who was at the Capitol on January 6th, where this Department of Justice brought all kinds of, at least against a third of them, untested legal theories, which the Supreme Court just slapped down in June and said, nope, can't bring laws that have to do with evidence tampering and document shredding against people who were at the Capitol that day. The other group that this Department of Justice has vigorously pursued and prosecuted are pro-life activists. In fact, they went after people who wrote in chalk in front of an abortion clinic in Washington, D.C., mm -hmm. that all black lives matter, pre-born black lives matter. And a three-panel three judge here in D.C. said that the Department of Justice was selectively enforcing the law against pro-life folks. And that's a pretty big allegation to say that. And so they didn't mind all of the rampant crime that was happening all around us right here in the nation's capital. But when it came to the people who were peacefully standing in front of an abortion clinic, you know, they threw the book at them. And those, there are so many examples. We could be here all day going through them. Yeah, those are two key ones, though, and, and a lot of video to go with it. Uh, another policy reversal or flip-flop, whatever you want to call it, Kamala Harris is making them. She used to put people in prison for a long time for possessing marijuana. And now that it's legal, she wants to wipe away laws against all illegal drugs completely nationwide, decriminalize them. What would it look like out there in the world if that were the case? Back in 2019, when then-Senator Kamala Harris filled out an ACLU questionnaire, she wrote, the opioid crisis has reaffirmed the failure of criminalization, full decriminalization, will appropriate treatment, with appropriate treatment, responses could address the stark racial injustice and reduce incarceration, end quote there. That's what she wrote. In 2020, Oregon became the first state to remove traditional penalties for drug possession. A Portland business owner describes the impact it had on the community. 
I had a customer who had to walk over a lot of people who were on the stairwell in the parking garage uh, doing drugs, at least like five people. It impacts our business. It impacts the soul of Portland's economy as well. The whole city was affected. This year, Oregon passed a bill to recriminalize the possession of small amounts of drugs. So they went back to making it a crime. Polling by the Oregonian found 73% of people who live there supported recriminalizing hard drugs. They learned some hard lessons, apparently. Crime rose dramatically in Portland between 2021 and 2023. Homicides up 11 percent, burglary nearly 10 percent, car thefts 33 percent, robbery up 23 percent. This is on top of increases in overdoses and homelessness. Carrie. Yeah. You know, I don't think this surprises anyone who has common sense. <laughs> of course, if you legalize drugs like this, it's going to hurt communities. It's going to cause crime to go up. It's going to cause neighborhoods to fall apart, uh, businesses to be impacted. But you know what really hurts, Harris? And this is what gets lost often in this conversation. It, the person who loses the most is the addict. They should be getting help not ways to further harm themselves. I've never understood this argument. And so in addition to what it does to the community, it really hurts the user themselves. And just, it's obviously a terrible idea. We saw what happened in Oregon. And, and you know, and you know where we can actually see a little bit, a glimpse into this is with the pushing of these so-called safe injection sites, which you know, there have been attempts in this country to do where people can literally shoot themselves up under supervision of doctors in neighborhoods. I mean, can you imagine what that does to a neighborhood? Would you feel safe with I don't your have children to. riding bikes? I don't have to imagine it. I mean, it happens in New York City and, and the, the boroughs here, the five boroughs here. I, I don't have to imagine it, sadly. But just think about the legalizing, the normalizing of why don't we just yeah. put everyone together and let them do drugs together under the supervision of doctors? It's crazy. It's and a, of course... Go ahead. I'm sorry. No, you go ahead. <laughs> no, I was going to say it's such a great question that you're asking, though, about particularly the injection sites. It's my understanding that the whole point is to keep them safe from things like disease that would spread with dirty needles. What about the stuff that's inside the, the syringe right, that's right. killing it, them moment by moment? And especially, right. God forbid, it's fixed, you know, all in with fentanyl. Right. Right. Again, you don't have to be an expert really in anything to look at a situation like this and say, wow, that's a terrible idea for literally everyone. Everyone loses. And I just think it's interesting that this ACLU questionnaire has come to light. Everyone mm -hmm. is seeing how Kamala actually feels about things and she won't say how she feels about things. Or if she does, she just mirrors whatever Trump says in the hopes that people will just not think that's what's happening. And so thankfully, we have this very helpful questionnaire that she herself or her campaign manager filled out just a couple of years ago to see where she actually stands on some um, and has some pretty extreme positions. Yeah. I mean, it's our job to fact check. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's what we do as journalists. So uh, and we get legal experts like yourself to take a look at the receipts that we find. Mm -hmm. I appreciate your time always, Carrie. Thank you. Thanks, Harris. Hey, everyone. I'm Emily Campagno. Catch me and my co-host Harris Faulkner and Kaylee McEnany on Outnumbered every weekday at 12 p.m. Eastern or set your DVR. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page for daily highlights.